are simply soaking. Why on earth <coughs> don't you go and change them? You'll catch a cold. I don't mind if I do. Colds are fun. She <laughs> loves having a fuss made of her. Beef tea, chicken, jelly with whipped cream, fires in her bedroom. Little Sybarite. So do you. No, I don't. One of my various ailments contain me to my room. I chafe, positively chafe, at the terrible inactivity. I want to be up and about. Shooting, riding, cricket, football, judo. <laughs> the usual run of man sports. Knowing you for what you are, lady luxurious. Please, 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 not in front of the child. It's demoralizing for her to hear her idolized brother held up to ridicule. You're not my idolized brother at all. Oliver is. <laughs> is that really so, dear? I think you have much too kind of heart to know it. What's the matter with you this afternoon, Bobby? You're very up in the air about something. Merely another instance of the triumph of mind over matter. In this case, a long walk was the matter. I went into the lobby to put on my snow boots, and then, as is usually the case with me, my mind won. I thought of tea, crumpets, and comfort. Oliver has gone on without me. He simply bursts with health and extraordinary dullness. Personally, I should continue to be delicate and interesting. You may have to work, Bobby. Really, Sylvia, you do say the most awful things. Uh, Joyce is only a school girl. She'll be quite shocked. We were jolly hard at school, anyhow. No, you don't. I've read the modern novice, and I know all you do is walk about with arms and twine, writing poems of tigerous adoration to your mistresses. It's a beautiful existence. You're a silly ass. It's very well to go on fooling, Bobby, but really, we shall have to pull ourselves together a bit. Mother's very worried, as you know. Money troubles are perfectly beastly, and she hasn't told us nearly all. I do so hate her to be upset, poor darling. What can we do? Think of ways to make money? It's difficult now that the war is over. That is cheap, cheap wit, dear. Also, it's the wrong moment for it. It's always the wrong moment for cheap wit. I'm mean, for one moment that it was, which it wasn't. Oh, do shut up, you make my head go round. Oh, Vanjie, dear, do come and join us. We're on the verge of a congress. I must read some more meta -like. You mean you must let us see you reading more meta -like. <laughs> Try not to be so irritating, Bobby dear. Just because you don't happen to appreciate good literature, it's very small in there to laugh at people who do. But seriously, Vanjie, we are rather worried about Mother. She's been looking harassed for days. What about? Money, money, money. Haven't you realized that? Uncle Dan was such a pretty substantial check from South America to help things on a bit after Father's death, but that must be gone by now, and Mother won't say how much Father left. Perhaps she doesn't know. She must know now. He's been dead nearly six months, you can consider it a beast. Bobby, do not talk about Father like that. After all, what? He was perfectly rotten to mother, never came near her for four years before his death. Why should we be charming and reverent to him just because he was our father? When I saw him, I hated him. And his treatment of mom hasn't changed that one bit, I can tell you. But still, Bobby, he was our father, and mother was fond of him. Ha! Once. Anyhow, there's nothing to be gained by running him down. The point is, have we enough money to keep on as we are, or haven't we? The only one who knows is mother, and she won't say. We haven't asked her yet. We'll make her say. Where is she? Up in a room, I think. Go and fetch her, Bobby. What? <coughs> now? Yes, now. Oh, no. Yes, yes. go, go along. along. Right, Hill. We'll tackle that straight away. Do you think we may have to give up the house? I don't know. I should simply hate that. So should we all. It would be miserable. Think how awful it must be for Mother. I say, don't you think Oliver ought to be here? If anything's going to happen. He's the eldest. He wouldn't be any help. He cares for nothing but the inside of Motors and the outside of Macy Stewart. He's not observant enough to know her inside. <laughs> what a perfectly horrible thing for you to say. Well, absolutely true. She, he thinks she's everything that's good and noble in the world, when all the time she's painfully ordinary. And a bit of a cat. What fools men are. One can't help but falling in love. Ooh, Bobby says you want to talk to me. What's the matter, darling? That's what we want to know, Mom. Come on now, out with it. You've been looking worried for ever so long. I don't know what you mean, Sylvia, dear. Ever since me, Mother, if there's something on your mind, that's all 
obvious to anyone. You know, I'm a bit good at hiding your feelings. Surely we're all old enough to share the worry, whatever it is. Silly old darlings. It's true, I have been worried. You see, we're ruined. Mother! <laughs> myself this morning. I had a letter from Tibbets. He's been through all the papers and things. Father's papers? I suppose so, dear. There wouldn't be any others, would there? <laughs> yes, but mother, what did he say? How did he put it? I really forget, but I know it worried me dreadfully. And we literally have to Penny? Well, only 1500 a year. It's almost as bad. Shall we have to give up the house? I'm afraid so, darling. You see, there are taxes and rates and things. Tibbets knows all about it. He's coming down tonight. Can't Uncle Daniel do anything? He's my only hope. I cabled to South America three weeks ago. I didn't know the worst of it then, but I felt I needed someone to lean on. After all, his check was a really great help. Is he very, very rich? He must be. He's a bachelor. And he has a ranch, and a mine, and things. Has he answered your cable? <clears throat> no, but of course he may have been out prospecting, or bronco breaking, or something when it arrived. <laughs> they live such restless lives out there. Oh no, I don't think he'll fail me. He's my only brother. I wonder how much he's got. Craft Tibbets will know. We'll ask him. Why? Is he Uncle Daniel's lawyer as well? No, dear. But you know how clever lawyers are in knowing other people's business. <laughs> I shall never forget. Yes, but, Mother, what will happen if he isn't rich and he doesn't help us after all? I really don't know, darling. It's terribly upsetting, isn't it? It would be awful having to give up the house. Well, Tibbet says we need it for another two years. It's paid for until then or something. Thank heavens for a relief. But we will have to be most awfully careful. <clears throat> Wait, darlings. Thank God I got you. Fuck up, Mother. It isn't bad as all that. After all, we can work! Yes, we can... <clears throat> work! <laughs> <laughs> I saw right things. Really artistic little fragments. We want money, Ranji. But darlings, you know you can't make money unless you're socialists and belong to unions and things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I should make money in time. There's a great demand for really good stuff now. Do you think yours is really good? I'm sure it is. Well, God help the bad. Look here, Bobby. I'm tired of your silly jeering at me. Just stop trying to be funny. I just realized the futility of the endeavor when I see how funny others can be without trying. <laughs> ill-bred little pipsqueak. He's not an ill-bred pipsqueak. Fanny Harris says he's the most good-looking boy she's ever seen. <laughs> she can't have seen many, then. Don't betray your jealousy of my looks, Evangeline. It's so degrading. I tell you. Children, stop quarreling at once. I think it is mostly considerate of you under the circumstances. Thank you, Bobby. My dears! What is it, Mother? Quick! Arrive this afternoon about tea time. Daniel! Uncle Daniel! In England! I suppose so. It was headed in at Charing Cross. What luck! Oh, my daughter! He may not have any money after all. Well, he'd never have gone across so quickly if he hadn't. Oh, it is too, too wonderful. I've not seen him for six years. As a matter of fact, it's jolly decent of him to be so prompt. Where's Oliver? He ought to be here to welcome him, too. Uh, Oliver has gone on for a brisk walk. Uh, to keep fit, he said. As if it made any difference whether he kept fit or not. It makes a lot of a difference, dear. He is the athletic one of the family. <laughs> I don't like the way you speak of him, Bobby. We can't all compose songs <coughs> and be brilliant. We <laughs> must try and cultivate a little toleration for others, darling. Oliver's a comfort to me, Tip's only said. Well, here he is, anyhow. Who's going to tell him the news? Well, I've no time now. I must change my dress for Daniel. Turn on the lights, Bobby, and make everything look as cozy and as festive as you can. Run into the kitchen, Joyce dear, and tell Cook to make an extra supply of hotcakes for tea. I'm sure Daniel will love them after being so long abroad and living on venison and bully beef and things. <laughs> and you will all wash before tea, won't you, darlings? You know how important first impressions are, and he's not seen you since you've been grown up. Just look at my face, I'm quite happy now. I think mothers rather amazing out of North and South America. They don't have such 
awful hardship where Uncle Daniel comes from. Hello. Oh, Oliver, something wonderful has happened. What is it? We're ruined. I just got to order some extra tea cakes. Isn't it all thrilling? <laughs> what? Uh, uh, is she talking about? It's perfectly true. We haven't any money, but Uncle Daniel is coming today, and we're sure he'll help us. Haven't a penny, but Mother's been rather vague as usual, but we gather that we're practically penniless, and we still have to give up the house after two years, unless something happens. Luckily, <coughs> Uncle Daniel is happening this afternoon. Mother's just got a wire from him. He's certain to be rich, Mother says. Why? Because he's a bachelor. He's been living in South America for first five years. Six years. Five years. Six years. Mother said so. No, she didn't. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. How does Mother get her that we are? Uh, she heard from Tibbets this morning. He'll be down tonight. By Jove, what a muddle. It's all quite clear if you think it out. Uh, we've <coughs> all got to wash and make ourselves look clean and sweet for Uncle Daniel. Your collar's filthy. You better go change it quickly. He could be here any minute. Turn on the light, Bobby, and do let's hurry. <coughs> what a muddle, what a muddle. What a muddle. No, dear, it's ever so much too old for you. I don't think it's at all too old for me. I shall certainly put it on. <laughs> oh, Uncle Daniel, you're here early! Oh, we just got your telegram! I suppose you must be evangelized. I didn't know there was a Sylvia. I was having some touch with the last time you were here. Having cut my head open on a door scraper at school. Naturally, you wanted to remember me. Oh, but I do now. We were the sole topic of conversation at lunch. How foolish of me to have left us my memory. Why are all the others? They're upstairs, improving on the almighty's conception of them as much as possible in your honor. We've just been having a sort of family conference. It was very heating. I think you might have waited for me. I'm the most important factor. What were you discussing? Oh, uh, ways and means. I see. It's as bad as that. But wait until Mother comes. She'll explain everything. I'll hurry her up. Oh, don't leave me all alone. I'm a most timid creature. <laughs> After all that wrong of us, I don't think. Long to be home. I imagine the winter afternoon is just like this one, with a nice crappy fire and tea and muffins in the grate. Oh, they're not in the grate yet, dear. But they will be soon. <coughs> I ordered a special lot because I knew you loved them. I can never thank you enough for sending the check, Danny. Oh, rubbish. It was the greatest help in the world. I headed for home the moment I heard you were in trouble. Has everything been very, very trying? Only these past few days. You see, George hadn't been near me for four years before he died, so it hadn't been such a terrible shock as it might have been. But he was still my husband, and he still He behaved it. like a beast to you, and I can't well, believe he's dead now. But <laughs> don't let's discuss my affairs. Tell me about yourself. What have you been doing? <laughs> that wait. Considering my sole object of coming to England was to help you, I think that would all be concentrated. Tommy now, has left you very badly off? Well, Tibbets says we're ruined, but you know what Tibbets is. Such a pessimist. Tibbets? Yes, our Laura, our Laura, our <coughs> You know. Do I? How much have you got? I think Tibbets said about 1500. But we can't keep the house and family going on that, can we? Of course we can't. What do the children intend to do? Well, they don't quite know. Poor darlings. Poor darlings? Is Oliver home? Yes. He's going to be a barrister or an engineer. He's been quite vague about it. 
but he's been learning Hellenism, so I know he's going to do something. <laughs> I see. Bobby. Bobby, he's so young. <coughs> of course, it's not his fault. Not his fault. <laughs> <laughs> he composes, you know, beautiful little songs, mostly about moonlight. Evangeline uh, writes the words. She's very artistic. What yes. does Sylvia do? She helps me. In what way? Well, she does the flowers, and she comes calling with me, and she's invaluable at jumble sales, when we have them. I'm the youngest. Choice, she's still at school. She's going to Rodian next year to be finished. Finished? Oh, I see. Well, they sound a pretty hopeless lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Danny, how can you be so boring? Why are all tarlings? You can't expect them to work. They've simply not been brought up to it. Well, I think it's about time we got it. you a bit, <laughs> but I may want to stop reminiscing. We've been longing for you to come home, little Joyce. Do you know you haven't changed a bit since I last saw you? <laughs> <laughs> may I say that it brings me a measurable joy to be once more in the bosom of my family. Um, uh, we're not really your family, but never mind. <laughs> I don't. But I have looked forward to this moment through the long sun scorched nights with the great dome of the sky above me. Shapes have drifted out of the surrounding blackness and beckoned to me, crying, Home, home, <laughs> in depressing voices. <laughs> I heard the sand buff calling to its mate. Home, it said, and bit me. <laughs> what did you do out there, Uncle? <laughs> oh, lots of things. Like gold mining, ranching, auction. Auction? Is it a very wonderful life, Daddy? Occasionally. On good days. <laughs> How do you mean, good days? Well, just good days. <laughs> do come and sit down, all of you. You look so terribly restless. I feel restless. It must be the home surrounding after all these years. I should love to go abroad. It would make a man of you, my boy. I simply loathe that. <laughs> so should I, between ourselves, but still. Oh, by the way, I have something rather important to tell you all. You must prepare yourselves for a shock. I. Hi. Uncle, tell us. Um, it's this. I consulted my doctor just before I sailed. Yes. He gave me just three years to live. Three years? What? It's true. Three years, he said. It's the most awful thing. Tell us why. What's the matter with you? The matter with me? Yes, you must see a specialist at once. No, no specialist in the world can ever do me any good. Why? But what is it for not saying? Tell us! Sleeping sickness. Why? <laughs> yes, it's frightfully prevalent out there. Oh, Any other problem is not infectious. Sleeping sickness <clears throat> by Jack. Yes, I simply daren't go to sleep without an alarm clock. Daddy, it's not too <laughs> dreadful. I can't believe it. But, Uncle. I got sleeping sickness polished off in one night. So it does, but that one night won't happen to me for three years. <laughs> the doctor said so, he knows. You see, I've got it internally or something. You must never go back there. You shall stay with us until, until the end. Oh, mother, darling, don't cry. I'm sorry I have upset you, man. But I have told you this today with a purpose in my mind. A purpose? Yes. I have a few words to say to you all. Words which, though they may seem a little mercenary, 
are in reality prompted by very deep feeling. It may seem to all of you banal in the extreme of things to talk of money on such an occasion as this, but believe me, it's best to get it over. I came over to England this time, as I have said, with a purpose. One might only say a double purpose. First, to comfort my sister, your dear mother, in her hour of tribulation. If you could all just say yes or quite so whenever I pause, it would help me enormously. All right, <laughs> all right we will. Thank you. You are a good girl. Where was I? Uh, tribulation. Hour of tribulation. Hour of tribulation. Yes. Quite so. I thank you. <laughs> and secondly, to feast my eyes for perhaps the last time on earth upon you children, and also to talk to you seriously. For after all, you are my, you are my only relatives in the world. Yes, yes. Quite so. I am as you may have guessed, a very wealthy man. Yes, 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 yes. And out there, we don't get much chance of spending our money. No, no. Quite so. And now, I have come to the point. At the end of three years, I shall be no more. Quite so. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> up. Um, we all must die sometime. Sleeping sickness? Anything but sleeping sickness? I believe it is very comfortable, but that is neither here nor there. What I was going to say was this. I am a firm believer in the old-fashioned laws of entail. I have no patience with this modern way of dividing up legacies between large numbers of people. Yes, yes. Quite so. When I pass into the great beyond. Pass. Into the great beyond. I intend to leave the whole bulk of my fortune to the one of you who is made good. How do you mean, made good? I mean, make good your position in the world. Justify your existence. Carve for yourself a niche in the temple of fame. Yes, yes. That was entirely unnecessary. I didn't pause. Sorry. <laughs> what is the use of idling through life? Frittering away your youth. I repeat, frittering away your youth. <laughs> when you might be working to achieve some great and noble end. You, Oliver, you might in time be a great inventor and know all about the inside of the most complicated machines. You, a bad line, might develop into a great protest. Your mother tells me you already write verses about the moonlight. They all stop like that, only unfortunately some of them stay like it. <sighs> you, Bobby, you are artistic too. You might, without undue strain, become a world-famed composer, artist, actor. Sylvia, for you, I can see a marvelous career as a Decorative designer. You already arranged flowers and jungle sales. <laughs> and last, but not by any means least, little choice now on the very fresh board of life. What are you going to do with yourself? Sit at home and wait for a nice husband with mediocre prospects and perhaps an overdeveloped Adam's apple? <laughs> never, never. You too must rise and go forth. The world is calling to you. Do what you will. I can't think of a career for you at the moment, but no matter. I only want to impress upon you all the necessity of making good at something. Make good, make good, make good. And the one who I consider has done the best for himself and the family name. To him or her, I will bequeath every penny I possess. Couldn't you all possibly speak one at a time, Sylvia? What we want to know, Uncle, is how on earth are we to start? I'll leave it to you. 
lovely darling. Sounds very much like everything else to me. That's only because you haven't any ear. As a matter of fact, they're quite good calls. I shall use them in my next tombstone cycle. Don't alter many of my words, would you? Uh, not many, but the bit about worms gnawing at the grave of my beloved is a little too gloomy. Could you do <laughs> butterflies? Don't be silly, Bobby. Butterflies don't live in graves. You can use the first two verses as they are. I shall. My goodness, the crumbies! I must go up and wash and cover any They'll be so overdressed themselves, so hopefully they have for any deficiencies in our appearances. <laughs> <laughs> Think I bet they'll do the same. I must do my hair. You don't have to do too much, dear. I'll begin presently, Mother. Unless my don't live in the summer house, and I'm afraid of forgetting it. Uh, you shall meet them at the doorstep. No, I shan't. I'm going through the drawing room window. <laughs> really? This must be considered a curse. Leave me alone like this. Will be darling? Yes, Mother. <laughs> I hope you weren't too shaken up the board. But Sylvia has taken the car down to meet my brother. Not at all, not at all. We didn't expect to be met at all. It's such a little way. Now, Bobby, have you, have you been writing any more successes? I think I've written one or two bad enough to be good. Oh, Mother, isn't he cynical? He always <laughs> talks like that. Fancy, he says his rose song is bad. Fancy that wonderful rose song. I'm always humming it. I forget it now, but I do love it. <laughs> I love it too. Do you really? Of course. Now then, shall we go out to the garden? Oliver and Van here somewhere about. We always love to sit under the big cedar in the afternoons. It's so beautifully shady. I envy a garden so much, Mr. Stewart. All I have are little rose bushes and a tennis net. Bacon says all that. Come on, Bobby. No, stay here and talk to me. Mother will only come back and fetch me. No, she won't. They're both joined quite happily. Terrified you why or something to say you couldn't come. Silly Bobby. Do you realize it's been a whole week since I've seen you? I've got something for you. What is it? A song. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shall I play it? Yes, dear. Yeah. Way, Joyce. I was just about to play a song. Her song. My song? I wrote it especially for her. Well, aren't you lucky? Come out presently when you feel you're rhapsodized enough. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Joyce, and do go away. Right, calm down. are such a nuisance sometimes. <laughs> they must be. Here, listen. My faith, my love, you've come. Just last night. the night is gone.
cute. Oh, Bobby, that is simply too sweet for words. It has something about it. Did you really write it for me? Every note. Here. Bobby, that's wonderful, wonderful. It's the best you've ever done. Now I know you're clever. Yes, but I didn't write that one. Oh, didn't you? Well, I know you would if you had thought of it, but never mind. Can you play the Indian love lyrics? I never get tired of them. Oh, I don't want to play anymore. I want to talk to you. What shall we talk about? Oh, I could tell you such wonderful things, but I don't know if you understand. That's not very polite. <laughs> I just mean that you wouldn't understand unless you feel as I do. Oh, I don't know how to put it, but do you? Do I what? Feel as if you could even care. A little. For me? I haven't tried yet. <laughs> well, will you try? I must ask Mother. Ask Mother? <laughs> but that's no use. Why? My mother could never make me care for someone I didn't want to, or, or not care for someone I did. Don't you see what I mean? If you're ever going to care for me truly, you're going to have to do it on your own. Love isn't something to be ordered about at will. Love is wonderful, it's glorious, but above all, it's individual. You can't guide it. Why, you might fall in love with a taxi driver or a dope fiend or... Mother would never allow me to know a dope fiend. <laughs> yes, yes. If you did, your mother's opinion wouldn't have any effect at all. Not if you had it in your heart, really and truly. Mother's disapproval might stop me falling in love. No, it mightn't. Nothing could. On the contrary, it would probably strengthen it. Opposition always does. Do you think so? I'm sure of it. But anyways, I'm going to tell you something. Bobby, darling? What is it, Mother? Just receive me. I was telegram. You met the boy in the driveway. Do listen, I don't understand it. Come to lunch Monday and discuss royalties. Claverton. What does it all mean? It's, it's not for you, it's for Vanity. Claverton's a publisher. What on earth do they want to discuss royalties for? Sounds so snobbish. Mother! <laughs> At times you're inimitable. Royalties means money. So much percentage, you know. You've gone over it heaps of times. Oh, of course, darling. How stupid of me. <coughs> Still, it's very muddling when I call things by fancy names like that. Put it on the mantelpiece and give it to Vandy when she comes in. Alright. Mother can't ever grasp the smallest technicality. You were going to tell me something. No, yes. I know something that will banish your mother's disapproval entirely. She hasn't disapproved yet. I only said she might. Well, she sure would want to make you a good match. I know mothers. They all do. I'm not a good match, I know. But what your mother doesn't know is that I have wonderful prospects. Have you? I should never propose to you otherwise. Well, you haven't proposed properly. I mean to as soon as I've told you everything. Will you listen? Of course. Well, have you ever met my uncle Danny? No. You will today. He's a wonderful chap. Eighteen months ago, his doctor told him he only had three years to live. <laughs> and the day he came down from South America, he gave us all a good talking to. Quite right, too. Why? Well, you see, father had left mother badly off, and we were all drooping around doing nothing. Of course. Then Uncle Dan <laughs> and said he'd give us a whole fortune to know one us made good in some way or another. Well, that bucked us up to no end, and now look at us. Vanity's raking in the biz with her new novel. Sylvia's on her way to becoming a big film star. Oliver has just made assistant manager at the Motorworks, which is a good step up considering he started as an ordinary mechanic. Uh, I'm doing jolly well off my songs, especially with Rose Passion Speech. Why they buy the beastly thing, I don't know. It's the worst of the lot. Oh, Bobby! Even Joyce has walked off with all the prizes at school and intends to become a great artist. You see, we've all risen to the bait. Eighteen months ago, it seemed providential that Uncle Dan should have such a short time to live. Now I rather hate it in spite, hate it in spite of the money. He's a dear. Though, of course, he went back to South America soon after visiting us. But still, he left an impression. Now we're all working like slaves, and helping mother keep on the house. Would have broken her heart to have given it up, but still, they're my prospects. A huge fortune. Quite soon. Yes, but Bobby, one of the others might get it. Ah, but there's just one more thing to tell you. Two days before he sailed, Uncle Dan took me aside and told me, 
in the strictest of confidence, of course, that I was the one out of us he had his eye on. Said he'd practically written the will in my favour already. Bobby! And he just but you must promise not to be the word of it to the others. Of course, you understand he couldn't show favouritism openly. No, I see. Now that I told you everything, Faith, darling, will you... Will you marry me? Yes, Bobby! Oh! <laughs> if Mother says I may. Don't you think she will now? Yes, I think so. Oh, I don't believe you love me one bit. Oh, Bobby, how can you? Well, do you? Of course, silly. Oh, Faith, we'll have the most wonderful times in the world together. Just you and me. This is wonderful. Tell me you're happy. Tell me you're excited about it. I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm so happy you that we ought to be ashamed of yourself. Standing around indoors on a lovely day like this. Heaven knows we gave little enough good air in town without wasting it to get out into the country. Mother, something important has happened. Now, Faith, you must let me tell her. It's my job, I won't check it. Don't be silly, Bobby. Walk to the garden. There's the garden. I'll be on in a minute or two. Do you make sense? Oh, all right. <laughs> you are a little fool, Faith. Fancy flirting with that, the elder one has much more in him. But I don't like Oliver so much. His chin's so scrubby. Oliver is a steady man with an assured career ahead of him. This one- Mother, we're engaged! Of course you are. That, is... <laughs> that was perfectly obvious from the moment I passed by that window. Now we have to go through all the trouble of getting you this engaged again. <laughs> You are very tiresome. Mother, <laughs> how can you be so horrid? You will not understand. Bobby has ever so much better prospects than Oliver. Who said so? Bobby? Uh, yes. <laughs> but it's true. His uncle's going to leave him. He's fortune in a year's time. Which uncle? He's only got one. Daniel Davis. He landed in England yesterday and is coming down here today. Eighteen months ago, the doctor said he only had three years to live. <laughs> I've been caught like that before. Why? How do you mean? It's Experience has taught me one thing, Faith, and that is that in this world, nobody dies when they're supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> the man will probably live to a right old age. Then, where would you be? Oh, anyhow, Father makes quite a lot out of the songs. <laughs> Don't be child of the faith. You know I would never allow you to marry someone without a settled income. Prospects never with anybody. And besides, if any of them get the money, it'll be on the road. He's the eldest. That's where you're wrong, Mother. Just before he sailed back to America, he took Bobby aside and told him, in the strictest confidence, that he was the one he meant to leave everything to. Of course, the others mustn't know because it would be favoritism. Don't you see? How much is he planning to leave? I don't know, but it's sure to be a lot. Why? Well, he's a bachelor, and he's been mining in South America. There are plenty of bachelors of South America who are absolutely penniless, <laughs> whether they mine or not. You are horrid, Mother. I did feel so happy, and I wanted you to be happy, too. It really was very sweet of you, dear. But I can't seem to work myself up to the same high pitch of enthusiasm. <laughs> Apparently, the final growth of a billion disease is able to gather back and forth across the Atlantic, gathering you to leave an extremely problematic fortune to an extremely scatterbrained young man. Bobby isn't scatterbrained. The whole family is scatterbrained. And I suspect the uncle's the worst of the lot. He wouldn't have been sent to South America otherwise. He wasn't sent. He went. How do you know? He probably put something disgraceful in his youth and had to leave the country. Like my brother, your Uncle Percy. And besides, I am certain there's a skeleton of some sort in that family. And he is sure not to die when we want him to. <laughs> the doctor said three years. Only to scare him. That's what doctors are for. <laughs> I believe they've cured hundreds of cases like that in the army. Did they, Mother? Besides, what's the matter with the man? I don't know. It seems the editor you better do a bit more research before you go off and get engaged another time. But I don't want to be engaged another time. I want to be engaged this time. Oh, Mother darling, won't you wait a little while? Just see the uncle. If you got him alone for a while, you could find out anything. You're always so clever at that sort of thing. Oh, Mother, do. 
I'll interview the man on one condition. And that is that whatever decision I may come to, you will abide by it afterwards. Yes, Mother, I promise. We better go join the others in the garden. They are being feverishly bright from the tennis lawn. There you are, Mrs. Crombie. You were born with watching tennis, too. Of course, all of our endorses efforts cannot really be called tennis, but still, it's an amusement for them. Have you seen my missing anywhere, Benji, darling? You had it in the drawing room before lunch. I'll go and look. Thank you so much, darling. You know, Mrs. Crombie, I imagined that all authors became terribly superior after a little time, but Benji hasn't a bit. It is such a relief to me. I haven't read her book yet. I really must order it. Here you are, Mother. Thank you so much, darling. You know, Mrs. Crombie, I started this at the beginning of the war, and I haven't finished it yet. I do hope you're not being terribly bored here, Mrs. Crombie. I'm afraid we're awfully bad at entertaining. Oh, not at all, not at all. You are one of those excellent hostesses who allow your guests to do whatever they please. It really is the most comfortable that way. I think I'll go out and join Bobby in the garden. Do, dear. I'm sure you love it. Your daughter is such a dear girl, Mrs. Crombie. We are all so fond of her. It is truly charming of you. She loves being out here, and it is good for her to get away from London for a while. I only wish we could put you up as well. But really, all the children at home, there's no room at all. I was only saying to Tibbet, my solicitor, you know, the one thing. I understand quite perfectly. Anyhow, I could never leave my husband at home for long. Men are so selfish, aren't they? Sometimes I'm afraid. But the rapid darlings when you learn how to manage them. <laughs> Fanny darling, did I tell you how many stitches I set on the sleeve? We have many confidences, Mother, but that is not one of them. That's going to be fun tiresome. I'm certain I told uh, someone. Oh, I was just saying, Miss Dermot, I really need to order your book. Oh, there are one or two copies in the house. I'll lend you one. It is very kind of you. I'm sure that you'll love it. I did. So Benji tells me I can understand half of it. Naturally, being my daughter's work thrilled me. So where she got most of her ideas from, I can't think. I've been most careful with the children's upbringings. Will Sylvia and Uncle Daniel be home in time for dinner, Mother? Yes. His train arrived at Easton at 11.30. They ought to be here quite soon. Unless, of course, something has happened to the car. But still, Sylvia drives most awfully carefully. They taught her to do lots of things like that on the films, you know. They are awfully daring. I shall never forget when they made her jump off of Westminster Bridge on a horse. My sister Amy was scandalized when I said. I can quite imagine it. It is very lucky of her daughter to do such a thing. Although, I'm glad Faith. The, in, isn't in the films, I should be worried to death. Of course I felt like that at first, too. But one gets hardened to anything. Even my poor brother's approaching death seems less terrible now. At the time when he told us it was a fearful shock, but somehow... It must be terribly sad for you. Faith told me about it this morning. What is he suffering from? Well, to tell you the truth, we don't quite know. He will joke about it, so. At first he said it was sleeping sickness, and then creeping quickness, or <laughs> new somnia, or something or other. <laughs> One comfort he doesn't seem to mind a bit. Perhaps the doctors diagnosed his case all wrong. Oh yes, they are careless, aren't they? Did you say diagnose them now? Fanny, that was the word you were looking for the other day for a short story. I knew it was dia something. I want a set, I want a set. Only because I had the sun in my eyes. Well, I offered to switch over, but you wouldn't. What time will Sylvia and your uncle arrive? She should be here any moment. Unless, of course, they've bashed up the bus. Isn't he technical the way he uses all the right expressions? It gives one such a professional air to call cars buses. 
very muddling. <laughs> oh, I wonder how Uncle Daniel is. You all must be wondering that. Hey. I shall go soon. I fear this man is going to be simply odious. Hey, darling. Let me introduce you to Mrs. Coffee and Faith, such a dear girl. Hello, Mr. Davis. I much about you. Are you feeling better? Better? Why, well, I never had a day's illness in my life. That is at least until I had the illness. Yes, it's very tiresome. A short life and a gay one, you know. Danny, darling, I could hope. Nonsense, dear. There is no hope. But that is a comfort to me. I always imagine hope wearing after a game of fine man's buff sitting on an orange. So uncomfortable. <laughs> Take it down if you are too absurd. I'm just glad Sylvia brought you back safely. I never really feel happy in my mind when she's out of the car. It's not really woman's work. As far as I can gather from what she has been telling me, filming seems to require a certain amount of unwomanly abandon. I was only telling him about the other day in the middle of the village street when I had to do three close ups on top of one another. It all sounds vaguely immoral to me. <laughs> Define the expression close up. What does it mean? It's when they bring the camera right up to your face and you have to register various emotions. Fear. Santa Lita, 
Far away from the beaten track, this lonely place lies basking in the sun. Oh heavens, how it bats. It's natives, carefree and irresponsible, dreaming idly through the long summer heat. What did you do that, Uncle? Huh? What did you do that, Uncle? Oh, lots of things. Fishing, yachting. <laughs> but I thought it was inland. Hmm? It's just, I thought it was inland. So it is, but there's a lake. Yes, there's a lake. We used to sit around the campfire in the evenings and cook the fish. Yes, salmon and cucumber. <laughs> and say, sweet little homely days. Your rose song, in particular, Bobby, was most popular. I must say that- Don't purge yourself, uncle. I know perfectly well it's the worst thing that's ever been written. If you're most successful- Of course it is. I've made literally hundreds out of it. The public wallow in it. Roses and passion and wine and eyes of blue. Makes me absolutely sick every time I hear it. But still, one has to write down in this world if one wants to get up. Speaking of roses, let's go out into the garden and talk. It's getting so stuffy in here. You can tell me more of your thrilling adventures, Danny. I'm sure he'd love to. What did she say? She said she'll see. Wait until tonight. Oh, Faith, darling. Come now, quick, or they'll miss us. It doesn't matter if they do. Oh, yes, it does. I don't know what we talked about. Oh, hello. Aren't you going to tell us things? No, not now. I must unpack. I must wash before tea. The truth of the matter is, I just want a little peace. No, all right, we'll leave you to it. Of course they don't know, and I shall never read a word to any of them, but 
I do wish you would leave everything to one of them and not me. I shouldn't feel happy for a moment with the money, not a single moment, if I had known all the time that I was going to get it. Roll me off the list, there's a dear. I'm earning an awful lot now, you know, on the films, and I really don't need any more. I promise you'll do what I ask you. I don't think you're quite in your right mind, but I'll say. There, there, well, I knew you'd see what I meant to be about. Now, tell me some of your adventures and things, and how you made your money. Really? I don't it think must that. Be so How does one prospect when one prospects, one scrapes one's hands in a river and finds gold nuggets in one's hands? If one's lucky, of course. You don't seem to know very much about it, Uncle. <sighs> On the contrary, I know all about it. But you wouldn't understand if it went into the technical details. I don't believe you would, uh, would either. <sighs> I think, Sylvia, that this lack of trust in your fellow creatures is a very sinister trait in your character. <laughs> <laughs> you must remember that I'm a much older man than I'm you. I'm not a man at all. Sometimes I wish you were, because then I could tell you what I really think of you. There, Uncle, I won't tease you anymore. But still, it must have been a wonderful moment when you had when you found out that you had made a fortune out of your mind. I did. But I thought... No, not exactly. You see, it was like... Hello, this. Sylvia. Thank God. <laughs> Mother's been looking for you. She's picking strawberries for tea out of the garden. Little Joyce is with her now, but she is no use. She eats them as fast as she picks them. <laughs> Oliver, get him to tell you some of his South American experiences. They're awfully interesting. Bye bye for the present, Uncle. Cheerio. I suppose you have to think for the whiskey and soda that you have, Oliver. Of course, I'll get to one. Feeling rather exhausted. I say, er, Uncle, can you spare me a few minutes? Yes, what is it? Well, I know it's rather bad for him to talk about your will. Yes, it is. But I feel I must. I... Don't worry yourself about it right now. Thank you. you just wait until I'm dead. No, I must get it over with. You see, I want to ask you to leave your money to one of the others and not to me at all. It was awfully decent of you to single me out for the money and it bucked me up a lot to know that you thought well of me, but well, now I'm earning steadily, and the feeling I needed work made them harm me. Plus, it would seem frightfully cabbage to the others for having known all along that I was going to get it. Don't you see what I'm driving at, Uncle? In a way, I do, yes. Well, it's a ripping feeling being independent and earning money, and I want to go on at it. Here comes Badgie. Leave it to her, will you? Nocorating's a frightfully precarious show, and she's a woman, and anyhow, will you? I'll see you. Uh, there you are, Uncle. I've been looking for you. I want to have a little talk with you. My God. What did you say? <laughs> I said, my God. Was that a little unnecessary? But still, I expect you get used to swearing over trifles out in the backwoods. I wasn't anywhere near the backwoods. Well, wherever you were then. Do go away, Oliver. I want to talk to Uncle Samuel privately. Right, so. You'll remember what I said. One, two. Cheerio. Cheerio. What? Um, yes, yes. Now, look here. I've had that will of yours. I don't think it's quite fair to the others. There you are, Mr. Davis. I've been wanting a little talk to you about South America. <laughs> I had a brother out there, you know. Splendid. Let's talk about him for hours. I'll come back <laughs> later, Uncle. I hope I'm not interrupting your little heart to heart talk between Uncle and niece, am I? Not at all, not at all. It's a pleasure, I assure you. <laughs> it doesn't matter a bit. Uncle Daniel's going to stay with us a long time, I hope. Okay. Now we can be quite comfortable, can't we? Quiet. As I was saying, I had a brother out in South America. What part? I'm not quite sure. He doesn't write often. He was sent out there for... 
for... I quite understand. For his help. I know. They all are. <laughs> it's a wonderful planet. He has it written for ages and ages. I was wondering if he was making any money or not. It seems so far away. Anything could be happening to him. In all probability, everything is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any adventures as you're making your pile? Oh yes, heaps and heaps. I take it you have a mine of some sort. Yes, just near the Grand Sand. The what? The Grand Slam. Ah, Slam. It's the name of a mountain, you know. What? Strange name. I wonder why they call it that. I can't imagine. It's often been a source of great perplexity to me. I take it yours is a gold mine. Not so that you notice it. I, uh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not especially a gold mine. It's a mixed mine. A little bit of everything. It's got Silver and copper and tin and salt and brass and God knows what. It's most exciting wondering what we are going to find next. <laughs> yes, so what I should imagine. Often on weary, dark nights, filled with the cries of the jackal and boa constrictor. <laughs> I didn't know boa constrictors cried. <laughs> Only when they are upset about something. <laughs> then they can't help it. There are few animals as highly emotional as a boa constrictor. <laughs> if you'll forgive me saying so, Mr. Davis, I fear you are a bit of a fraud. I beg your pardon. I said I thought you were a fraud. Of course I am. All oh, great men are. Just take a look at George Washington. He wasn't a fraud. We only have his word for it. <laughs> and anyhow, he knew his father had seen him cut down the cherry tree. That's why he confessed. But why should you think that I am? Because you obviously know nothing about mining. And I happen to know there is no such thing as a mountain in South America called the Grand Slam. <laughs> I intended to find out as much as I could on behalf of my daughter. My dear Miss Crombie, I assure you that there is absolutely nothing between your daughter and me. My intentions are absolutely honorable. I was not alluding to you, but to your nephew. Your youngest nephew. Oh, I see. He's been courting her. This afternoon he proposed to her. Did he? I chose. He also spoke of a large sum of money you intended to leave him. And I'm sure you understand my position. I naturally want my daughter to marry well. And you mean to make quite sure of the money beforehand. I see. You put it rather crudely. I think matters of this kind are better discussed crudely. One thing I will promise you, Miss Crombie. You shall know the full particulars of my finances and everything else by the end of the day. Until then, I fear you must continue to regard me as a fraud. I hope you're not terribly offended by my inquisitiveness, but my I- My dear Mrs. Crombie, when you have knocked about the world as much as I have, one learns never to be either surprised or shocked. It is so very hard being a mother nowadays. Yes, isn't it? The children are all so modern, they become quite ungovernable. I would say that my nephews and nieces are exceptions to the rule. I am so glad you are satisfied with them. <laughs> I am. I never realized until today how absolutely splendid it was to be an uncle. How wonderfully proud I should be of the fact that I'm related to them. I came home 18 months ago expecting to find a family of irritating, self-centered young people idling about. True, they were idling, but I liked them in spite of it. I have returned this time to find them not only hard workers, but successful hard workers. There is not one of them who hasn't achieved something. Even Joyce, the flower, has set to and made good at school. I tell you I'm proud of them, so proud of them that I could shout it from the rooftops. And may I tell you something, Mrs. Crombie? That if your daughter has succeeded in making Bobby fall in love with her, she is a very fortunate young woman. Oh, is she? Because she is a fine boy. So is Oliver. So are they all splendid, and she should be proud to know them.
I am so glad you're contented with your lot. Personally, I'm not so ecstatic. Assuming for a moment that your nephew has such a marvelously fine character, which I doubt he should have made certain of his prospects before pulling to my daughter. I will speak to him, Mrs. Crombie. I should be very glad if you would. And please understand that nothing is to be settled without my consent. I quite understand that. Thank you. I think I'll go out and join the others in the garden. I'm sure they'd be charmed. <laughs> <laughs> my God, what a woman. Has she gone? Yes, thank God. I say, Benji, she is a very objectionable woman. I know, we all love her. Now at last I can talk to you alone. Now look here, Mandeline. I know exactly what you are going to say. How do you know? Instinct, my dear. <laughs> Pure instinct. Let's just talk all over. No, not now. I must go to my room. Oh, just a little talk? I have to unpack. Also, I must wash up a tea. Also, I'm feeling quite tired and I feel my illness coming on. Also, I must write some letters. Also, it's quite obvious that you don't want to, so I'll leave you alone. Cheerio for the present. They all say that. <laughs> Cheerio. I'm sure it pretends to something. <laughs> Hey, 
screamed. I'm hurt. You've wounded me to the quick. I don't believe you've got a quick. Shut up, Bobby. Yes. Did the agency of Miss Crombie here? Ah. Miss Crombie, I've just been chatting to your mother. Your dastardly trick has been exposed. Is it or is it not true that you took each of us aside and turned a year and a half ago and filled us up with confidential lies about your will? That's absolutely true. Why did you do it? Aha. Why did you do it? Do you really want to know? Of course we do. Very well then. I'll tell you. The reason was this. You were a set of idle young bounders. Never done a stroke of work in your lives. Neither had I, but I didn't see why you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> there was your mother, that's comparatively hard up. You would have to have left this house, which would have made her perfectly miserable. So I decided to spur you all on to do something. And I say, you must admit I succeeded. Never mind that, go on. Well, not having a penny in the world of what to help you myself. I had a feeling about like that. that. I repeat, not having a penny. Do you mean to say that you haven't a bob? <laughs> not a bob. Except for on the all too rare occasions when I win a little. If it were not for those darn little horses, I don't think I should be able to get across to England at all. What about the mine you told us of? I never told you of a mine. Oh, Uncle, you are a fibber! You said I had mine. As a matter of fact, I was a part owner of one, but that was a long time ago and proved to be absolutely worthless. But don't worry yourselves over me. I shall be quite alright. We weren't. I didn't say you were, I said don't. <laughs> I realize now that I also told you I had only three years to live. This was added in as a bit of local color. <laughs> I hope to live till 82 or even 83. <laughs> All I can say is the wrongest thing I've ever heard. How dare you come here and stuff us up with promises you can never keep. I'm, I thought it was such a good sport and what's the use in talking anyway? You don't give a damn. Come away, Faith! Very well. Oh, how could you? It strikes me as being a singularly pointless practical joke. I'm very disappointed in you, Uncle Daniel. So am I. I thought you were too decent a fellow to do a thing like that. I think you're just horrid. It'll get all over school now. They've all had a go with me. Haven't you anything to say to you, Sylvia? No, I haven't anything to say at all. <coughs> you see, I knew all the time. You knew? Well, I guessed from the first and found out afterwards. But how? You see, Uncle Darling, I knew that no one with a smile like yours could ever have a one. so utterly beastly. If you're going to be rude, I shall go away. Do you really care for me so little that you can give me up at a moment's notice like that? You will not understand, Bobby. I had to. Why? Because Mother made me promise. What did she make you promise? She made me promise that... that... Well? Well, you see, I'm an only child, and Mother wants me to be happy about all things. I, I can make you happy. Wonderfully happy. Mother doesn't think so. You <laughs> see, I've always been used to having money and comforts and things. <laughs> Do you imagine that I shouldn't be able to give you all the comforts you could want, whether I had Uncle Daniel's money or not? Why, in a year or so I should be making hundreds and hundreds. 
I intend to be successful. Nothing will stop me. Well, Bobby, if you come to me again, then perhaps Mother would- You mean that I'm to continue working for my happiness on the off chance of your being free to accept me? <laughs> Neither you nor your mother have enough trust in me to believe I shall make a big name for myself. Good God! It was a pretty thought of your parents to call you Faith. I suppose you had a couple of sisters who called them Hope and Charity. <laughs> question of common sense, but common decency. How dare you say that? Why can't we just be friends? Do you know how much you bother you to just be friends? Men can't turn their feelings on and off like bath taps. When they mean a thing, they mean it, and that's the end of it. I wish I'd never come down at all if all you need to do is grumble at me. It's more than grumbling. It's genuine unhappiness. I quite realize now you never cared for me in spite of what you said, but still, I want to find out why. Why you've changed so suddenly. Why you didn't hurt me so much? If you'd written breaking it off, it would have been different, but you've been so... so unnecessarily brutal! It was Mother's fault. You said everything you do your mother's affair? Does she count every breath you take? Why, your life simply can't be worth living! I wish I could make you see. I'm afraid you've made me see too much. I didn't realize people could be so callous and cruel. I'm not callous and cruel. Oh, yes? Yes, you are. <laughs> and you've made me determine one thing, and that is henceforth I honestly need to cut women out of my life forever. I know it's a happy thing to say, but I mean it. I ought to have learned from other fellows' experiences, but of course I didn't. I think you're very silly and childish to be so bitter. Bitter? Ha! What else could I be? The one girl whom I cared for and trusted has gaily thrown me over at the first moment she hears I won't have as much money as she thought. <laughs> I'm losing my temper, and I'm glad of it. I shall probably repent every word I say, but that won't stop me from telling you exactly what I think of you. I didn't suppose you've ever been in love at all. But I hope that when you do this, you get it really badly. You deserve to be absolutely, utterly wretched, as wretched as you've made me. And I hope that when you do marry, that you get a rotten old soft marmalade maker who says hopes and spills the packets down his waistcoat. Oh, Bobby, how dare you? <laughs> Faith, I didn't mean a word of it. I swear I didn't. <laughs> Whether you meant it or not, I hate you. You're blatant and beastly. Of him up and making him work, 
and secondly, for getting rid of fate for him. <laughs> Had he married her, she'd been a millstone round his neck. He doesn't realize it now, but yesterday was one of the luckiest days of his life. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Well, that's splendid. You've buffed me up tremendously. I can't mind the green hot nearly so much now. Uncle, you're not to go to the green hot at all. I must. When they all sort of round looking perfectly reproachfully at me, it makes me feel as if I can stay underneath the table. But they won't. They have got over it. They're far too young to get over being made fools of as quickly as that. But on this, they abuse. I'm firm. I won't come back until they want me. As a matter of fact, I realize I've been very foolish. I shouldn't have let things go so far. Naturally, they were terribly disappointed that I'm wanting to live to 82 or 83 and not having any money to leave them. They're not really disappointed so much as outraged. They feel like you've been <laughs> laughing up your sleeve at them, which of course you have. No, I haven't. You're wrong there, I haven't. I couldn't help you financially. I borrowed the money to come over and the tech I sent before. I just won, so I, I thought the only way to assist at all was to use mental persuasion on all of you. It's such a wonderful idea of having money left on, and seems such an easy way of getting it. Of course, it answered better than I could have imagined in my wildest dreams. It was a little unnecessary, unnecessary to take each of us aside like you did and stuff us up with hope. That and a few pieces was all I had. It was such a wonderful situation. I, never having a penny in the wide, arranging to leave you all my entire fortune. <laughs> you must admit, it was very funny. Yes, it, it was. And when I said I had to sleep in a second. Oh, how could you? Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> poor mother's getting more misified every minute, and both her poor tickets doesn't know if he's on his head or his heel. But look here, they'll all be down here soon. I, they can't find me here, what is the flight? I must leave at once. Yes, but will you promise on your word of honor to come back the moment I send for you? If you promise not to send for me until everything is quite all right and everyone is perfectly amiable towards me, I shouldn't be able to stand any more rebus. I should burst into tears if anyone even gave me a look. Yes, I'll promise. I trust you because, after all, you spotted from the first. That was very difficult. I've always had a good eye for hypocrites. <laughs> Mind you, don't go further afield in the greenhouse. You bet I shan't. Bye bye. Bless his heart. Hello, mother. Good morning, darling. I'll be getting letters. Only one for you, I think. Some timidness, I expect. Now, from Isabel Harris. I do hope she doesn't want to come and stay. I couldn't bear that. Oh no, it's only to say that Fanny's been engaged to an officer in the Coulson Guards. How splendid for her. Poor Fanny, I'm glad. Why do you say poor Fanny, dear? I'm sure she is very fortunate. Nowadays, when nice men are so scarce, I was only to say. She didn't say he was a nice man, only that he was in the Coldstream Guards. I say poor because I can just imagine all the awful relations of as bridesmaids and her father and mother shoving her up the altar steps in an effort to get Mary. Isabel means well, although she's a little trying. I've never liked Charlie. No man with such a long, droopy mustache could ever really be trusted. <laughs> Besides, they're so unsanitary. <laughs> Sound the gong, dear. I do wish they all learned to be a little more punctual. Boiler. I'll see you back after breakfast. 
And Sylvia, will you find out if Uncle Dan's coming down soon? He's not in his room, Mother. Not? How very strange. He must be out in the garden somewhere. Perhaps you better sound the gong again here. You might not have heard it. You seem to have taken a dislike to that gong, darling. We must start with without him, that's all. And do sit down, Oliver. You're much too big to pace backwards and forwards like that. Part the coffee, so be here. It's ready. If you'd endeavor to cultivate a little more repose, Royce dear, it would be an advantage. I couldn't help it. Fancy, Betty Paris is engaged. What fun. It may not be fun to you, darling, but it will be most amusing to Mrs. Harris. I do wish Daniel would come in. Where can he be? Nobody cares anyhow. How can you be so horrid, Bobby? I did think you'd recover from your silly temper before this. Fancy not being able to take a joke. It wasn't a joke, it was true. You really are ugly absurd. Pass me the toast. I wouldn't have believed you could have all been so silly. I expect Uncle Daniel's just laughing at you. Yes, that's exactly what he is doing. I really think, Oliver, that you, as the eldest, ought to set a little better example. Come on, Wayne, thank you. After all, considering how good he's been to us, we might allow him to have a joke without becoming disagreeable, even if it doesn't amuse us very much. Why? I, hey, Mother, it wasn't a joke. It was the gospel truth. You really are a set of maddening children. Pass me the paper, Sylvia, dear. I wish to read it. Has anyone seen my tennis racket? Bobby had it yesterday. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You and Faith, I saw you. Well, where is it now? I did see a racket behind us in the house this morning. Would that be it? Now look here, Bobby. If you go around leaving my racket outside one more time, I'll punch your head. I tell you, I never took a damn racket. It's all on my own. Jolly rotten one, though. Oh, shut up, Joyce. Mind your own business. Don't speak to Joyce like that, Bobby. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'll speak how I like. Oh, come on, Harry, what? Oh, come on, I'm strong and silent. Tell the brother. Let's be mad and knocking on another bat. That way, you know, Well, you better not try it. Why, Stop it. it. Yeah, see? That's what happens when you let elephants loose in the house. Oliver? You and Bobby don't stop quarreling. You better both leave the room. Can't think what's the matter with you all. Just because Uncle Daniel chose to have a little fun with you, you all behave like bears with sore heads. Uncle Daniel met every word he said, Mother. He hasn't got a penny in the world. Nonsense, Evangeline. How do you suppose he was able to get backwards and forwards to America and send me large checks and things? He wins a little from horse racing from time to time. Rubbish. No one can ever win at horse racing. I never did. <laughs> Bookies and jockeys and people don't let you. Mother dear, how can you be so obstinate? I tell you, he told us all about it here yesterday afternoon. Give us his solemn word. Only in fun, darling. Only in fun. He's obviously a very rich man. By the by, I wish one of you would just go out to the garden and find him. The mushrooms will be ruined. He's not in the garden at all, Mother. He's gone to the Green Heart. What do you mean, Sylvia? Why has he gone to the Green Heart? Because everybody here has been so beastly to him. You mean that he? Oh, Sylvia! Mother, darling, don't cry. Daddy, darling, my only brother! And you driven him away! After all this kindness and everything. Oh, how could you? How could you? He must be sent for at once. You are wicked. Wicked children, and you don't deserve anyone to be kind to you ever again. Sylvia, send the car down to the green heart at once, Uncle Dan. Yes, Mother. Can you believe what like you've done? You are cruel and horrid, and it's all very bad, Mother. But he did make fools for us. He didn't do anything of the sort. He only meant to kindly, going through all that trouble too. With one foot in the grave. The other in the green heart. But mother, he isn't going to die. He says he's meant to live to 82. 83, I think, was the age dear. But that's just another instance of his dear selfishness. So that you wouldn't worry. I know. 
I'm going back to my room. You go set me for the rest of the day. Call me the very moment he comes. Oh, how could you? How could you be so unkind? Just look at my nose. It's all right and shiny. <laughs> That's torn it. Now what are we to do? I know. Well, what is it? Apologize to Uncle Dan, every one of you, for being such utter beasts. Well, we're heck. So you jolly well ought to be. Who do you owe your position to in the motor works, Oliver? Uncle Dan. Who do you owe your song successes to, Bobby? Uncle Dan. And you, Joyce. Do you think you want a single thing if it hadn't been for him? Do you imagine Evangeline would have had the them to have stuck to a novel? apparently was so he could die off conveniently and leave us his money. The moment he done that, I suppose we should have stopped working. What charming characters, waiting for a man to die and then getting disagreeable because he says that he doesn't want to. Can you imagine if any of you would stop working now for anything? Of course you wouldn't. I know that. <coughs> Don't you see Uncle Dan showed the one and only way of really helping us? He worked wonders and we ought to be faithful to him until our dying day. It's all fine for you. He has to come between you and the one person you ever loved. And that's one of the best things of all. He's been the means of showing faith to Bobby. You must realize now in your heart of heart what a rotter she is. She wouldn't have been if it weren't for the beastly mother. And just because you found him out before us, by a fluke, you think you can preach just about being rude to him? Well, you'd have been just as bad, if not worse, under the same circumstances. Your having found him out doesn't, found him out doesn't make it any less disgusting. He's behaved atrociously, making fools of us all, and you know it. What do you think my friends will say? Joyce and schoolgirls? That is literary nuts! It's your own silly fools! You should have told them! Don't be so superior! Of course we only told them in confidence. Sylvia, you're as bad as he is. And if you think you can get bound just by making excuses for him, you're jolly well mistaken. I suppose all this is just a put up job. How dare you, Bobby? It's nothing of the sort. Only luckily, I have a little discrimination. I can see the difference between good and bad, and Uncle Dan is good. Good old through. He wouldn't do harm to anyone or anything in the world. He did all of this out of genuine kindness. He couldn't help us in any other way, so he made us work, hoping it would improve us. And I should think he'd go back to America, sick and wretched with disappointment inside, having discovered that we, his only relatives, have only liked him and been nice to him because of his money. Waiting for a man to die like beastly, treacherous ghouls. But I like you are ghouls and selfish kids, and if you don't apologize to him, I shall never speak to any of you again. I left the car down the drive, <laughs> hoping to make a sweet, lovable entrance with perhaps a few red leaves on my coat. <laughs> Where are all the others? It's no use, they're still being beastly. Mother sent for you, she's frightfully upset at you going to the green heart. It's like keeping it up, I think I'd better go back. <laughs> no, 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 not do anything of the sort! You're to stay here! They can be as disagreeable as they like. We'll go about it together. You can come to the studio, the studio with me tomorrow morning. You, Sylvia, how well can be described as a sympathetic character. You've been very nice to me all along. Can I leave you anything? Don't joke about it, Uncle. It's all so <laughs> If I don't joke, I should burst into storms of passionate sobbing. <clears throat> well, that would be rather awful. Daddy, oh, here comes Mother. They are unkind and heartless. And I made the mushrooms especially for I made the mushrooms especially for you this morning. Sit down and have them now. They'll be quite hot still. Sylvia, check them if you please. I just can't imagine how they're all behaving like this. I shall never forgive them, Danny dear. You won't let them upset you, will you? Well, they seem to have had upset everything else. Toast and coffee? Or would you rather have tea? Tea, please. Tea, then. Here you are, Uncle. I'm going up to my room. Call me if you want anything. I'm 
Time to apologize. Oh, have you? Oh, will you please be nice and make it easier for us? <laughs> you, none of you, have made things in the least easy for me. I know, and we're all sorry, frightfully sorry we talked it all over. Sylvia said that we were all beasts and ghouls, and we didn't admit it then, but we do now. We're terribly ashamed of the way we behaved. Please, please can you forgive us? <laughs> and don't worry about Faith. I'm glad you were the means of showing her up. I don't love her a bit anymore. I hate her. And we all want you to know that we'd rather have you alive and well than all the beastly money in the world. And we'll do anything to atone for it. We'll abase ourselves like they used to in the olden days to show they repented. <laughs> well, then let's go to that, Uncle. Oh, now I see what you're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest think I will. Oh, thank you, Uncle. Um, thank you so much. I hope you all know your love. Oh, we have to get out of You have no idea what I'm saying. Sentimental, cause so it 